Now, we're focusing on a population with capital N individuals, and there's some feature of that population and those individuals that we're interested in. So we assign random variables to each individual, and the random variable will represent the feature that we're interested in. Now, statistics, you could think of really as what's called inferential statistics. We're trying to extract a sample, take information from the sample, and use it to say something about the entire population. So, in particular, when we take a sample, we take the measurements we've got, the random variables, and form what's called a statistic. So, a statistic is just some mathematical function of the random variables that we've got, and we use the values, the observed values of that statistic to make a guess or an estimate about the population parameters. Now, for example, we could be interested in the IQ scores of our population. So let's suppose that our individuals are modeled by some random variable XI. We are going to assume that they're IID. We don't know what that distribution is, but we will assume that all of the random variables have the same average IQ score along with the same variance. Now, neither of these parameters are known to us. So to try to get an estimate of what those parameters would be, we take a sample. So when we take a sample, we take some smaller subset of the population, size little n, and then we form a statistic, which is just a function. Sometimes we call it an estimator. In the last lesson, we talked about an unbiased estimator for the population average. It was what was called the sample average. It was this random variable. So it's a new random variable, and we calculate it by a simple arithmetic average in this sense. So it's a function. Now, once we collect our sample and we construct this statistic, we get an estimate, or it's an observed value. And the value that is spit out, we denote with a lowercase letter, little x with the bar. So for example, it might be the case that when we take a sample of 31 people, we get an average sample IQ of 105.84. So this value, this is the number we observe by using this mathematical function or this statistic. What distribution does our statistic follow? We're going to focus our effort, in particular, on the sample average. What distribution does the sample average follow? This is going to be called a sampling distribution. This is the terminology that's used. Now, you might think, well, we already know the answer to this. The central limit theorem tells us that if we have a sample of size greater than or third uh, greater than or equal to 30, we know that the sample average has to be normally distributed. It has the same mean as the population, but its variance is reduced. But there is an issue. When we talk about sampling, we don't know the population mean. That's fine. We're trying to estimate it. But we also don't know the population variance. So it's going to be really difficult for us to estimate the population mean if we can't even use the variance there. So we need another way around this. And it seems most straightforward 
for us to use the sample variance instead, right? This is a central principle of statistics. If you don't know something about the population, use information from the sample. The sample variance we talked about last time briefly when we talked about bias, and it essentially just says we are going to take the difference in the square deviations of each random variable's value from the mean, and we divided it by this n minus 1. Now, how is this going to help us? It's easiest to see this with a normalized variable, and I should say a standardized normal variable. Okay, now we know that by the central limit theorem, this has to follow that particular normal distribution. So if we define a standardized normal variable as usual, x minus mu over sigma squared over n, we can't use this sigma squared. So instead, we are going to replace it with the sample average. So the normalized variable or the standardized variable was going to be x minus mu over s squared divided by root n. So I'm going to write this as follows. And the reason that I'm doing all of these algebraic manipulations will become clear in a moment. So it might seem like you're confused as to why I'm going about and doing things this way. But trust me, this will turn out to be the way that we need to approach it. So I'm hoping that you can see this is equivalent. Now I'm also going to play a little bit of a game here and say, okay, look, in this slot, I've got a 1. So as long as I preserve that, I can put in any value I want that follows the rules. Now I'm going to put right back in this sigma. You might say, well, hold on. I thought the whole point was that you can't put in the sigma. Yes and no. Huh? All right. Here's what I'm saying. We've now got this. This thing right here is our standard normal variable. This thing is strange. And the reason that I've done all of these manipulations is to get to this expression. Now I'm going to state all of this without proof, and I'm not expecting you to be able to prove it, but for your reference, this material comes from chapter 5.4.2 you can show that the population variance and the sample variance, sorry, the sample variance has its own strange distribution. This is the Greek letter chi, C-H-I. So this is what's called a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now I am sure that none of those words mean anything to you, and that's okay. We aren't going to expect you to know anything more about it other than it exists. So what I can do is take this sigma squared, put it onto the other side, write it as follows. It would be a 1 over n minus 1. And the reason that this is good is because I can say that this thing is distributed like the square root of this distribution. And that's good because that's exactly what I've got in the denominator here. Now you might be saying, well, hold on, what does all of this stuff mean? And that's exactly how you should be feeling. So what we are going to say is, look, we started to try to estimate the population mean in order to do it, we wanted to use the central limit theorem. Well, the central limit theorem required us to know the population variance. I don't know that. 
So what I do instead is I do a big algebra song and dance and a whole bunch of gymnastics and I can get to this line right here. By all of this math mumbo jumbo that Alan's telling me about, I can come up with the following expression. X bar minus mu divided by the square root of this strange distribution. What on earth is this? It turns out this is distributed kind of like a normal, a standard normal distribution divided by this weird chi-squared distribution. So it's no longer correct to call this z anymore. It's something new. We are going to call it a t. And this is a new type of variable. Not only am I going to call it a t, I'm going to put reference to this value of n minus 1. So this is something new. This is called a t distribution. So the sampling distribution of the sample average with size n follows a t distribution with what's called n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now you don't need to know anything more other than this is the distribution we're using. The degrees of freedom are important to us. And so what we are going to do is start talking a little bit about the t distribution. What does it look like? What are its properties? How do I perform calculations with it?